What's up, what's up, wrestling fans? I am coming to you from Studio C. I'm calling this Studio C. This uh, closet dining room area. Which you guys have seen me in before a little bit, but let's talk about a couple things. First of all, monetize this is tonight on my other YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Corrupted Podcast. Be there tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Uh, Brock Lesnar has been confirmed for SummerSlam, something that we pretty much all thought was coming. It was a sort of a, yeah, you know, nice try making us think he's not going to be there. You know, he's really, you've got to believe he's going to be there. And with him, and with us believing that Brock Lesnar was going to appear at UFC in November, there was really no reason that he wouldn't be there unless he was a real dick, right? And there was really no reason that he wouldn't be there, especially now knowing that the UFC fight will be in January. Now, the only other thing you could say is that he was holding up for some kind of money that we didn't know about or some kind of deal or whatever the case may be. And if that was the case, then in my opinion, it would have been easy for WWE, I think, just to double up the offer, treat it like it's two shows, give him double the money, and call it the last show. Be done with it. Say, listen, well... You know, we'll give you, fine, we'll give you this. Please, we, we need you to show up. Uh, we'll pay you double. We'll pay you for two appearances in one. Your your price, two appearances. And we'll uh, and you cough up the belt. And that's what, uh, you know, I would think that they would do. But this was clearly planned all along to keep it going as long as possible, to sort of keep the mystique, to keep the intrigue. I think that's part of it. To keep the fans upset as long as possible, to build the intrigue for as long as possible as well. They may still play dead uh, like he's not going to be there. Up until even pretty late, possibly. Then again, he might be there next week. I don't know. We know that Paul Heyman was at Raw in Boston the other night. Although he did not appear on the show, he was there. Whether that was in talks to control SmackDown or to control the creative process before it gets to Vince, we don't know. Paul Heyman could be going back to being um, the writer Paul Heyman, could be back to going in that kind of Russo spot, which would be... Uh, in the company's best interest, I think it'd be in, possibly in the company's best interest to have a guy like Russo, Cornette, and Paul Heyman, and we've talked about those three guys uh, four years ago on the show, and uh, you know them them we talked to them about Conan actually when uh, K Dog came on the show, and he was like, "Man, you want to see someone get knifed like a motherfucker?" <laughs> like it was like, "Yeah, man, I want to see somebody get knifed." You know, those are three pretty strong personalities, but I say put them all in a room. Uh, they may never agree, and they may tear themselves apart and eat each other alive. But who cares, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I'm just I, I think that way. I think rather than hiring all these TV writers and putting all these TV writers in the back that clearly just piss everybody off and write these garbage, and you sort of get rid of the script. You know, you don't need again like the. You don't need to go TV 14, right? You don't need to go TV 14. All you need to do is have a better, have better writing and better decisions. Um, you know, tell everybody, listen, we're chopping the scripts in half. You know, come up with a with key points that the wrestlers maybe need to say in certain situations. But we're going back to bullet points, and we're we're going back to letting them create their character. You know, we're going to steer the character if we want to in a certain direction. But in the end, you know, sometimes, most of the time, it's going to be up to the wrestler. If they can do it, if it's not up to them, we'll, you know, we'll steer them more. But they need to go back to those bullet points, letting the, letting the wrestlers create the character so that it comes off authentic to the people. And uh, that's about it. Hey, man, you know, if, uh, if Bret Hart never said, you know, you're like Generation X, you're more like D-Generation X, you know, if he never said D-Generate, you know what I mean? What would they call themselves? You know, maybe they just would have been a tag team and it would have gone away. You know, maybe it's just been a faction. Um, or they would have been some cheesy faction name or something. You, you don't know what it would have been, but the name DX comes because Bret Hart was on a microphone. He was just allowed to go off. You know, there's multiple, like, hundreds of examples of this. So they need to do that. With Raw having the lowest, I can't say this enough. Like, when will we will be able to say this again? I believe if things don't change again, as I did before, the ratings will continue to go down. So maybe at some point this year, we may be talking about Raw's all-time worst rating again. It beating the rating right now in July, possibly, maybe in uh you know a December month or something like that. But um you know we don't you know you don't know what's gonna happen. By the way, uh, my show is brought to you today by WrestleCrate. You guys got to go get yourselves a WrestleCrate at WrestleCrate.com. 
wrestling box comes every month, a bunch of cool stuff inside of it, autographs from wrestlers, t-shirts, you can choose which box you want, but you get to save money when you use my coupon code, and my coupon code is Joe Sent Me. So just use Joe Sent Me. You should get a percentage off. If you do get a uh, Russell Crate, make sure you guys uh, do an opening or take a picture of it. Tweet it at me saying you use the coupon code, whatever. Let me know. Tweet it at Russell Crate on, on Twitter as well. Appreciate that. But, yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see what happens. You know, we, they pretty much we, we nobody believed really. Like I, I said about Brock Lesnar being at SummerSlam, I think some of the things that were said were like, I, I'll believe it when I see it. I just don't believe it. Uh, I see an article here about Jeff Hardy says why he's not doing the Swanton at live events. I'll tell you why, because he's goddamn in pain. I don't even need to read that article. Jeff Hardy couldn't even run down to the ring the other night, and in the ring he looked bad. He gave himself up to put that over. A lot of credit to Jeff Hardy. I have to believe 100% Jeff Hardy is dropping the belt at Extreme Rules this Sunday. I mean, if you're going to bet your friends on something, I mean, this guy has severe nerve uh, I don't know, nerve atrophy or nerve damage. I'm not a doctor, but he's got something going on badly with his nerves right now in his leg. I believe it was his right leg or his left leg. I, I, it's one of those legs. Something is going on. like the, and, and, and you could tell. I mean, before for a while, you couldn't really tell. And then at a few live events, people took some video where they could tell. And then he appeared to be okay the next day. And, and then it was back. And clearly on, on, uh, on WWE TV the other day, I mean, wow, he just did not look right. So he is, I got, I got a 100% believe that he is dropping that belt to Shinsuke Nakamura this Sunday. And, um, if he doesn't, I will be absolutely shocked because they are, they have been continuing to ride Jeff Hardy, the broken train of Jeff Hardy for the last few weeks. This guy needs, I don't know how long it takes for nerve stuff like this to go. Like he needs to stretch. He needs to relax it, stretch, lay down, take it easy. I, I don't know. I don't know if he needs uh, massages. I'm not really sure what he could need uh, as far as that goes. But um, he definitely needs some kind of time off. Again, you know, you wouldn't think he did, but they've been really riding him for a while. I think he's been saying, hey, I can go with it. It's not that bad. But, you know, he definitely needs three to, three to six weeks off. And hopefully that's what he gets, and hopefully that's all he needs. And hopefully it goes away at that point. You know, we don't know. Uh, but anyway, what do you guys think about this stuff? Leave it in the comments down below. I want to thank everybody on Patreon for making this video possible. I wouldn't be able to do these videos without you guys on Patreon or the live donators. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Go check it out. A bunch of bonus stuff on there. Tons of uh, podcasts and other things. I'm adding some things today. that will be up in the next couple hours. And I will see you tonight live for Monetize This over on the YouTube.com slash Corrupted YouTube channel. Uh, my other YouTube channels are listed down below. And it's monetized this, and it's championship night. The Himmel God, the Himmel Champ, is putting his belt up on the line. And a lot of a lot of people are talking trash about getting that belt tonight. Uh, but don't remember, don't forget, I got goddamn points in the bank, baby. I got points in the bank, all right? And I can get things done. I don't drive a Mustang. I get things done over here, all right? And I don't got a sailboat, and I don't sail away, Okay? I stick around and I keep it going. I don't sail away like a pussy. So I'll see you tonight on Monetize This, episode 169. That's right. Whenever there's a 6 9 in a Monetize This, you know I'm going to be geared up. I'm going to be really geared up. Down there. <sighs> Sorry. All right, no, leave your comments down below with what you guys think. I don't know. We're getting ready for Extreme Rules on Sunday. It's probably going to be horrible just like last year, but hey, shit happens. Alright guys, here's some other videos you guys might have missed. Make sure to sub me on my other channels. Goodbye.